So we're going to calculate some limits. And the first step towards calculating any limit at a point is to plug that value in and see if you get an answer. So in the first one, we're taking the limit as 3x plus 2 goes as x approaches negative 3. So we're going to plug in negative 3 for x. So 3 times negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 9 plus 2 or negative 7. So our limit exists and it is equal to negative 7. Number 2. Limit as x approaches negative 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. So plugging in negative 1, we have negative 1 cubed minus 1 over negative 1 minus 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 minus 1 over negative 1 minus 1. So we get negative 2 over negative 2 or 1. So that's always the first step towards solving any limit. Now, if we go down to the third one, first step is to plug in negative 1 for our x's. If I plug it in on top, I get negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Minus a negative 1 is 3. Minus 3 is 0. And if I do it on bottom as well, I also get 0. So I get what's called a 0 over 0 case, which is an indeterminate form. So it may or may not be solvable. So we're going to see if we can solve it with some algebra. One of the things we can try and then recalculate the limit as x goes to negative 1 is factoring. Well, there's nothing we can factor out of the denominator. But because negative 1 made the numerator 0, we can assume that x plus 1 is possibly a factor of the numerator 2. So if we go to factor this, it'll factor into 2x minus 3 times x plus 1. And if we check this, there's our 2x squared, there's our negative 3, we get a minus 3x, a positive 2x gives us a negative x, and these will cancel. Now what we can do is we can try again to plug in the negative 1, and we get 2 times negative 1 minus 3, or negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5.